It appears that Bernie Sanders has had enough of Democratic strategist James Carville. Look, uh, James, in all due respect, is a political hack uh, who said very terrible things when he was working for Clinton uh, against Barack Obama. I think he said some of the same things. Uh, look, we are taking on the establishment. This is no secret to anybody. We're taking on the wall. I guess uh, the former head of Goldman Sachs uh, attacked me uh, yesterday. Yeah, he had We're some taking kind on of Wall Street. Well. He did. Yeah, Wall Street. And the insurance companies don't like me. And you know what? The pharmaceutical industry, which is charging us 10 times more for the same drugs they sell in Canada, they don't like me either. Nor does the fossil fuel industry, because their product happens to be destroying our planet. Nor does the military industrial complex or the prison industrial complex. We are taking on. Trump, the Republican establishment, Carvel, and the Democratic establishment. But at the end of the day, the grassroots movement that we are putting together of young people, of working people, of people of color, want real change. Absolutely. Uh, so, look, I, I love that response. I mean, especially calling James Carvel a political act. Now, I, look, I'll get into that uh, as well. But... Here we go. Spicy Bernie is the best Bernie. Uh, and now I want to show you uh, what Sanders is responding to because James Carville has been a, a virulent critic of Senator Bernie Sanders ever since he started uh, rising in the polls and actually had become the Democratic front runner. So now I want to show you uh, what Bernie's responding to uh, right here. The party, in my opinion, has, has got to know who it is and who its constituents are. The other thing I would say, and, and I'll say this just as clearly and directly as I can, the only thing, the only thing between the United States and the abyss is the Democratic Party. That's it. And if we go the way of the British Labor Party, if we nominate Jeremy Coburn, it's going to be the end of days. If the British Labor Party would have nominated David Milbank, they'd be in power. So I am, I am scared to death. I really am. No, I think the only thing that James Carville is, uh, is afraid of is losing his powers and, and his influence. I mean, it, look, at no part during Trump's presidency did people like Carville ever actually lose anything, right? No, what, what bothers them the most about Trump is lack of decorum, right? Oh, is that, is that he's rude online? Okay, but like, here's the thing. You actually benefited from Donald Trump's tax cuts. Now, you might disagree with them, and I totally disagree with them. But I disagree with a lot with everything that he does. But I also disagree with the establishment because they don't do anything to actually fight back against Trumpism. And that's the problem here. Look, again, and, and I think that this is about um, losing power, losing influence. And, and this, look, this whole discussion about uh, you know, Bernie Sanders being a, a cult, right? Because he had also said that uh, and comparing Sanders to Corbyn is kind of ridiculous. First of all, it's two different elections, two different nations, two different candidates. Corbyn is actually kind of unpopular uh, in the UK. Bernie Sanders is the most popular politician in the country. But also in the UK, Bernie Sanders is basically a centrist. And in reality, his policies appeal to the broadest swath of voters. You want to talk about the abyss? We're in it. We're literally in the abyss right now. Uh, and no Michael, Michael Bennett, who, by the way, I know just dropped out, uh, but that was his choice. That was who Carvel had endorsed, enthusiastically, by the way. No Michael Bennett's going to bring us out of that abyss. Our only hope is to be bold. And there's only one candidate that's actually proposing bold action. As Bernie Sanders. But here's the thing about Carvel, right? Carvel is pretty ancient uh, at this point, right? Uh, and I'm not trying to be ageist or anything like that. I'm just saying that that's what it is. Back in 1994, his style of politics actually worked. But guess what? It's not 1994 anymore. He believes that working class voters are basically all moderates, right? That we're looking for a conservative Democrat. Well, that's not true. And that we can't wait to vote for somebody who offers little to no change. Uh, because it's all about decorum, right? And all we care about is the way that they're rolling up their sleeves to get to work, you know? No, 
No, no, no. He's a relic of the past. And by the way, he's one of the people that pushed triangulation, right? Uh, and appealing to suburban Republicans instead of actual leftist progressive voters to the Democratic base. By the, by, by the way, the Democratic base is massively in favor of progressive ideas. Over 70% of Democrats want single payer health care. So, but the fact that Carville's candidate of choice, Michael Bennett, right, got less than 1% of the vote in the last two primaries, well, that should tell you something, right? I should tell you something about how people actually feel uh, about, uh, you know, Bennett and, and Carville's uh, politics, right? I don't think people have an an appetite for the Clintonite type of uh, type of electioneering anymore. Again, this isn't 1994. The parties are not the same. The Republicans are certainly not the same. And the Democrats are more corporate than anything. The Democrats have basically taken the place of Republicans. And the Republicans have gone insane. They have gone off a cliff. What Bernie Sanders, and, and, the, and one of the reasons that Bernie Sanders appeals to so many people is that he's trying to drag the, everybody off the edge. Bring the left back to the left with FDR-style New Deal-type policies, policies that we see very, very effective in Denmark uh, and in other places uh, you know, all around the world. In fact, we're the only country that doesn't have uh, universal health care. That's insanity, right? But James Carville's like, oh, no, those people who support uh, single-payer health care, cultists. Oh, you're all just cult. It's unrealistic. No, no. What's unrealistic is perpetuating this system that doesn't work, that allows 45,000 people a year to die because they can't afford health care. They can't afford their medicines. They can't afford to go to a doctor. That's insanity. No, that's the cult of for-profit health insurance. That is the cult of centrism. And that's what it is. That's what that is. And they are clinging to their centrist root so much, so hard in the face of change that it's it's almost like they're a parody of themselves at this point. They want to continue the status quo. And that in itself, I think, is culty behavior. When you try so hard to preserve the system that has made you wealthy and powerful uh, and, and influential at the expense of everyone else so it is pretty hilarious that this guy thinks he's got the finger on the pulse of the democratic party when it seems like that's the furthest thing from the truth hey guys hopefully you enjoyed that free video now i'm gonna have to ask you a favor between the uh, demonetization and the youtube algorithm messing around with view counts etc we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.